Chapter 10. How I Use StoryGrid Tools My desire from the beginning was to offer tools you can use to create better stories and a common language to think about and discuss the use of those tools. This allows us to become better editors of our own work while also, when the time comes, making it easier to work with our editor. In this final section, I want to walk you through a process I use to apply the tools in my own stories. Obviously, nothing is magical about the way I do it. Every writer who employs the story grid method can and should find the way that works best for them and their style. If you're just starting out, though, this is a good place to begin. Whenever I'm starting a new writing project, there's a constant tension between the two writers who sit on my shoulders. One wants to plan my story meticulously before I write anything. Often called the plotter in writer circles, this part of me is driven by fear. I don't want to waste time writing a story that never ends up going anywhere, so I try to plan everything from the start. The other part of me is free and confident. He's the pantser of the pair and wants to take that seed of an idea for a story I woke up thinking about and start writing. He trusts the muse will show me the way. Of course, they're both wrong. I know from experience that trying to plan the perfect story down to the scene-by-scene -scene detail before I begin writing is a fool's errand bound for frustration. Whatever plan I have will fall apart. Even if it did work, it would be devoid of the special things that arise from nowhere while we write. But I also know the pantser is out of his mind. I'll start writing and generate tens of thousands of words that never actually go anywhere or coalesce into a story. So I've made a deal with the two of them. I promise the pantser I will leave plenty of room for the muse in my work and won't plan too much, but I also lay out some guideposts in advance to keep my plotter from freaking out. Before writing the first word, I start with a fool's cap. I decide on the global and secondary genres. This allows me to know what values are at stake throughout the story. Then, based on the genres, I make a list of all the conventions and obligatory moments my story must have and I make a loose plan of how I will fulfill them all throughout my story. Then I plan my point of view and make a rough draft of the theme. Finally, I map out the beginning hook quadrant. If I feel like I have a good idea of what will happen in middle build one, middle build two, and the ending payoff, I'll fill those out too, but I don't worry too much about it. I need to know how to begin, so I map out the five commandments of the beginning hook and get to work. While writing my story, I never go back and fix things. I just keep writing forward. This is common advice from lots of prolific writers, and I agree with it. I review my fool's cap at different points in the process and update it with what I've learned of the story. When I finish one quadrant, I'll map out the five commandments of the next one. The goal with these adjustments to the fool's cap is not to get it right. It's to keep my signposts ahead of me. I need to know what I'm writing toward. As I start writing each day, I think about where I am in my sequence and quadrant and how that informs my current scene. I keep up this process until a first draft is complete. Once I've finished the first draft, I wade back into my StoryGrid tools to review my work. Keep in mind, Sean Coyne developed the StoryGrid methodology to help him as an editor. Obviously, the better we understand story, the better we're going to write our first drafts. But the StoryGrid tools really shine when we apply them to editing our drafts. The first thing I do is create a fresh fool's cap. If I kept my fool's cap up to date and referred to it as I was writing, this should be pretty straightforward, but I like to do it from scratch so I see everything with fresh eyes. I should be able to complete the entire top portion and also identify the five commandments of each of the quadrants. The next thing I tackle is the spreadsheet. I go scene by scene through the entire story and fill out the columns in the story grid spreadsheet. This is tedious work and I recommend doing it a little bit at a time. I shoot for three to five scenes a day. I find if I do too many, I am tempted to rush through it. I also keep a list of notes. I record anything that pops into my head that needs to be fixed in the second draft. Each note might be vague or specific. It can even be something as simple as, figure out how the machine actually works. It's basically just a long list of to-dos that I will tackle in the next draft. Once I'm done with this, I take a break from the story for a few days. This gives my brain time to work on everything after a lot of intense staring at the manuscript. When I come back, I review my notes. This involves a lot of thinking and deciding. I often have a lot of world building to do and continuity issues to address as I think through my notes from the spreadsheet in relation to the fool's cap. The goal of the second draft is to have a story that works and is readable. As I write the first draft, I often change my mind and direction midstream. In the next draft, I apply those changes to the other parts of the book. 
Once I've thought through everything and made my decisions, I turn my notes into a to-do list. This to-do list could include tasks as extensive as rewriting an entire sequence or as tiny as adding a single sentence to the fourth scene to set up what happens in the ending payoff. The second draft is my favorite. It's all about fixing problems. I feel confident I'm making the story better with every keystroke, but there's no pressure to make it perfect. In my mind, I'm shooting for about 80% done. It'll still require a lot of tweaking and tightening down, but someone could sit down and read the story start to finish, and it's not a train wreck. Once the second draft is done, I recommend bringing someone else in. At this point, we need someone with a fresh perspective, someone who can see the forest and the trees in our work. My recommendation? Hire a StoryGrid certified editor. We can hand them our fool's cap spreadsheet and manuscript and have them immediately work through it with us because of the shared language and toolbox. If we can't hire an editor, we can find another writer from the StoryGrid universe to work with. Again, this will allow us to use the common language outlined in this book and have useful conversations about how to make the story better. My goal here is to have someone read the manuscript, review my spreadsheet and fool's cap, and then come back with me with their own to-do list. Once this is done, I review each scene and look for ways to turn up the volume on the values at stake and continue weaving my theme into the manuscript. Third draft should be written quickly, unless our editor or friend found huge problems with our novel. It's a lot of making what we already have better. When the third draft is complete, it's time to make some decisions. We can review the story a couple of more times with our editor to make it stronger, but it should be getting pretty close to finished. From here, our goals for the story determine where we go next. Querying agents, submitting to a publishing house, or independently publishing are all on the table. What matters is we put in the work and applied the story grid tools to make the story the best we could at this point in our writing journey.